This is Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Sacramento today, joined by John Morlock. He's a state senator for the state of California, and he is well known throughout the nation for having predicted the debacle that was the Orange County bankruptcy. And history tends to repeat itself. But take us back to the early days of the Orange County bankruptcy and what you saw and why that continues to inform you as a legislator today. Well, uh, I think uh, some of your viewers have seen the movie The Big Short. Oh, yeah. So it's sort of like that. Uh, you know, you're trying to tell everybody that something's going to happen if interest rates rise, the strategy that's being used. And guess what? Interest rates are rising. <clears throat> we just found out the feds were increasing interest rates. You know, and it's been, what, 10 years yeah. since we've had a bump. But at that time, interest rates were about 3%. And so the county treasurer would borrow short-term 180 days right. at 3%, and then he'd buy bonds at 5%, and he'd make the 200 basis point spread. It was, Great. We, we call it the carry trade. Right. We also know it as hedge fund. Right. Kind of, you don't do that mm. with cash management. And, but he was doing it. I right. said, boy, if the short end goes up, right. then your borrowing costs will be higher than what you're earning. And that's what eventually happened. The county imploded, had to sell its portfolio because you have to borrow against your assets. And so right. the collateral holders said, we want our... We want our assets back, and the county lost $1.7 billion. And then like we that. fast forward to 2000, and those were good years. The Internet was exploding, and what happened then is that the bargaining units, um, as well as the state of California, realized that the pensions of the state were over. They had more money than they needed to they pay out. They were fully funded. They were fully funded, beyond fully funded. And so what happens, we increased pension benefits. Right. Um, the, the, the majority of the CalPERS board are comprised of union representatives. So two-thirds are public employee unions okay. members. And they, they tend to be a little older. So the older guys are saying, what can I get for me? Because in a few years, I'm out. So they, they said, since we're overfunded and, and we've been earning 20%, 30% a year with this dot-com right. boom, that's going to go on forever. For a of lot of people, it is. yesterday is, 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 is today is tomorrow, and, mm -hmm. and things do this, not mm -hmm. this. So they they should have said, why don't we sell our stock portfolio and buy 8% mm -hmm. paying bonds? We'll be fully funded, and we won't have to take any more risk for the, you know. And But no, they said, we better raise our benefits, and they went up uh, 50%. 50? 50. 50%. Retroactive to the date of hire. So if you were a Date of hire. Yeah, that could be from the 70s. Exactly. Right. And so you could have waited just a few more weeks for this right. for SB 400 to become effective, and then you got a 50% bump. So instead of getting, say, a pension of uh, 50000 a year, you got 75000 a year. But what's remarkable about... And it wasn't funded. Right. What's remarkable about SB 400 is I feel as if almost immediately, Democrats, Republicans, didn't matter what party you were, there was a sense, maybe this isn't going to go well. I mean, especially with the electricity debacle that quickly energy the it's energy in debacle. Yeah. So it you know Enron, 9/11. It, it just felt like we are yeah. in trouble. We did see some reform in 2012. You weren't here yet, uh, but what happened in 2012? Because we knew that SB 400 was going to come back and bite us. Well, Governor Brown decided he had better do something about pension reform, or otherwise he couldn't go to the voters and ask for a tax increase. Right, Prop right? 30. Prop 30. Mm -hmm. And you were oh, who the best thought? host. Who would have thought? And, and, and so he tried to do a lot of things, right. and a lot of it was, was tossed to the side. Meaning so, it just didn't happen? It didn't make it through negotiations? Exactly. Well, yeah, right. as, as you do, you're making sausage in Sacramento. Some things get amended out. Mm. And so we've decided, why don't we take what he wanted to do. I see. And let's put that back. And we decided, well, let's take Senate Bill 32, which is the same number for the reduction Perfect. of greenhouse gases, right. which have to be reduced by a certain time. Right. We said, hey, let's You're do good. the same thing. You're good. You're good. <laughs> the yeah. Same thing for unfunded liabilities. Let's get yeah. them down you know, to 1980 levels by and a certain and date. And let's talk about that, because as we speak, there are pensioners that have devoted their lives to our state, their county, their city, whatever it is. And because cities and counties and state, not state yet, but are not able to satisfy their obligations to CalPERS, their pensions are being slashed dramatically. I mean, talk about Loyalton. We, we, we've heard about Loyalton. Well, Loyalton is a, a small city. Right. And but still they, part of California. They stop making their pension plan contributions. Mm -hmm. And so the 
CalPERS, the pension administrator, said, okay, plan sponsor, we're going to deal with what we have and we're going to pay the benefits based on what we think we can earn going forward. So the two retirees in this I case, think it's five. Small, I think whatever, five, yeah. they will get a reduced pension. You know, just, it's but just, they didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. And now LA Works, a, a program in the San Gabriel Valley, is their pensioners. I think it's a 200, sir? And so now they yeah. didn't do anything wrong. And they're getting their pension slashed. And there's Pritchard, Alabama. They didn't pay their pension benefits or, or in, in, in the pension plan either. Mm -hmm. And we even have one fatality where one retiree couldn't afford to pay for his heating bill and froze to death in his home. Actually, a retired police officer. So they didn't do anything wrong, but, but they, they did sort of in an implicit way. They said, hey, we want big benefits. Not thinking, how is that going to be paid right. for? They're bargaining so, units. So they're, bar yeah, their their unions mm -hmm. said we want these great pensions. You know, we got to retain everybody. But here's and the now thing. we got to pay the piper. But, but here's the thing, look, the bargaining units are advocates. Apparently, they're great advocates. I, I would think there's enough blame to go around, though. I mean, the state agreed well, to this. Well, you could say that the city council shouldn't or have voted city, for it. Right. But when you look back at the contributions that they received to run for that city council position, so it's all, may have been totally right. funded by the unions. I it's, hear you. It's a scam. Well, but there's a lot. And they, yeah. and they win, and, and when you win, you get to do whatever right. you want, and now we got to figure out what to do. So, so let's so figure out SB 32. Well, that's 32. Yeah. I've also got uh, SB 681, right. which says, okay, CalPERS, you're not the mother of Loyalton. You can't just go to Loyalton and say, hey, you owe us this massive number because the t when Loyalton was making their pension plan contributions, CalPERS assumed a 7.5% rate of return right. on their money, which isn't accurate. And, and when Loyalton wanted to get out of CalPERS, CalPERS says, well, now we've got to base the assumption at 3% or 2% or something really low, like the 10-year bond, and boom, they get this massive bill. Well, CalPERS was committing fraud. And they were not charging what they should have charged all along. That's not. They should have been charging more. Should have been. Should have had a much higher contribution based on a lower investment return assumption rate. And so for them to say we want you to pay us, so we can get our trust fund up, right. so that we can pay the retirees, Loyalton should be able to say to Calpers, Hey, how much did we put in? How much did we earn? How much did we pay out in benefits? Give us the rest. I understand. And then you just give us the money. And that's what you're looking to do in 681. Right. And that's not what they've done. That's not what they've done. With and Loyalton, will, LA Works. This will freak them out, but they've got to they've got to stop being the mother of plan sponsors. They are just a service provider. So what can you do? I mean, look, you've been singing this song for a long time. You have credibility on this issue, but this is tough. I mean, like you said. The, the, bar, the bargaining units are powerful in this state. That's not to say your friends on the Democratic union state. side. This is a union state. But I no got to think it. your friends on the Democratic side see the crisis. I mean, I would like to think they do, mm -hmm. but they're going to get the phone call. You know, everything's fine. Leave our pensions alone, and 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 you just keep going for that cliff. And then it's just going to be a mess. It's just going to be about a the governor? mess. They, what they about call the him governor? the best Republican the governor, governor gets in the out state. In two years, Brad, and he's going to skirt out of here. It's the next governor I'm worried about. That okay. person's going to walk into a buzzsaw. We'll have to start dealing with all these lingering problems that we refused to deal with because the unions were too powerful. His name is John Morlock. No, his name is Scott Pomerantz, and I'm John <laughs> Morlock. And it's been great to have the best host on TV interview media today. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in our next edition. Next time. <laughs>